Hello everyone, today we are going to be making some fun summer containers and these containers might be going in front of our shed, they might be going over here, we'll see where they're going to end up. So I have these containers over here that we inherited them when we bought our house, so that would have been uh, a little over seven years ago and they are on their last leg and they're falling apart but I do love the design. They look like they're made of stone, but they're actually not made of stone. Uh, they're just uh, fake. They have like a stone layer on them as if, or something of the sort that makes them look that way. And uh, the inside is just plastic. And it makes them really convenient because they're super light and I could just easily pick them up and put them wherever I want to put them. And uh, I wanted to get new ones of these. They had some beautiful ones at uh, Home Depot, but they're super pricey. And I thought if I'm going to pay that much for a pot, I would rather go for the real one because it's you know pretty close to the price of the real one. This one over here on this side of me has a big crack at the bottom, uh, but it makes good drainage. <laughs> so I'm still going to use them until they are done and they're completely broken up and eventually I'll get some new pots. But I really wanted to put something either in front of the shed or over here because it will give the space kind of a facelift and uh, make it more cooling, especially with the tones that I have over here and just make it more enjoyable to be in. And this is the Queen Carpenter Ant. I got it. Got the queen carpenter ant. <laughs> I feel very successful right now. So let me go through the plants that I have over here and then we'll go ahead and plant. First plant I have, and I got two of these, is the diamond frost euphorbia. And of course, who doesn't love diamond, diamond frost euphorbia? I love it because it reminds me sort of of uh, baby breath. And I love baby breath. I love the texture, the uh, wispiness of of that plant and this gives the same vibe and this can tolerate both sun and shade and it's going to give us a nice texture so it's going to have a beautiful mounding uh, shape and because it has this wispy texture it's not overwhelming to put in the containers if you already have a centerpiece which I do over here so the next plants I have so each pot is going to have one of these the next plant I have is mini famous neo light blue calibrocoa and these are trailing plants and they are they have a beautiful purple to them and the leaves are also uh, a small textured leaves they go really well with the geraniums that i have over here because the geraniums have big leaves on them and i wanted something that has smaller blooms i didn't want it to kind of steal the show from the geraniums because i wanted the geraniums to be the focal point and i'm going to be using two of these in each of the pots and these grow about a square foot in both uh, trailing and in width and you can trim them to make them bush out a little more and they are also self-cleaning these calibricos are also sun loving and they do not like to sit in moist soil they prefer to dry out between waterings so you don't want to overwater these don't love them too much <laughs> when something says full sun that means they require at least six to eight hours of sunlight and calibricolas are recommended to be planted and planted in containers because they don't do super well in directly in the soil because the soil tends to hold on to more moisture and that causes them to rot. But if you have good drainage in your soil and you have it maybe on a slope, you can plant it in your flower bed as long as it gets good drainage. And the last plants that I have are these geraniums over here. I grew these from seed and I have today the rose geranium. So I have two colors. Uh, this is, uh, I have the pink bicolor geranium and I have the rose geranium. For this combination, I'm going to go with the rose geranium. Oh, apple blossom geranium. No, the rose geranium is the red. Hmm. So I have a really tough choice to make. I have the apple blossom geranium and I have the pink bicolor geranium. These are, if I didn't mention, these are zonal geraniums. 
So they are an annual, but they have a beautiful scent to their leaves. They are sun tolerant, but when you are watering them, you want to make sure to not have any water touch the leaves. Otherwise, the sun will scorch the leaves because the leaves have little hairs on them and they catch the water. And when the water sits on the leaf, the sun is going to be magnified and you will see that the leaves starts to start to scorch. They also uh, don't want to sit in super moist soil because they will uh, rot. They can uh, get uh, root and stem rot. So you want to watch out for that. So that makes a great combination with the Calibrachoa over here. Now I don't have any experience with a diamond frost euphorbia. This is my first year planting it. Uh, we'll see how that does with these two plants over here and um, if it, it might like more watering than these two do but I'm gonna try it out and see how that works out so I think so such a tough choice uh, hmm, hot pink or apple blossom which one if I choose the pink bicolor is going to have a more cooling effect with the apple blossom color is going to be more of a pastel so it's going to be sort of softer um, and it could go anywhere and I feel like if I'm going to put it over here on the side of the stairs uh, it's, I should probably go with the apple blossom so that's what I'm going to choose because in the front of the house I already planted the pink by color oh I forgot to mention I got these plants from our local nursery and I also got a soil mix from them so this soil mix that I have over here already has some food in it for the plants so I don't necessarily need to add any fertilizer I'm going to save the rest of the fertilizer for the rest of the plants that are going to go in the ground and since this already has fertilizer and I also fertilize my plants in the pots once a week to once every two weeks depending on when I'm able to get to it. So these pots are empty, they don't have any soil in them. I emptied the soil in the, from them uh, this uh, earlier this spring because I had some plants before in there and they just kind of had a lot of roots. Uh, so I just wanted to refresh the soil. Also the soil was super old. I don't refresh the soil in the pots every year uh, but I do top dress with some soil. You can also top dress with compost. That's going to add a lot of nutrients to your plants and uh, it's going to give them a good boost for the season. So let's go ahead and fill these containers. planting something like this you want to make sure to pack the soil around the root balls so that there aren't any air gaps in between because that's going to cause these plants to die uh, because when the air is touching the root balls they're going to uh, dry out a lot faster their roots are not going to be able to reach to uh, the moisture and to the nutrients and water also when you water water is going to be directly touching those roots there's not going to be a protective layer around them and they're more prone to root rot and root degradation so make sure to pat oh a hummingbird just flew right by the camera also these air pockets can cause 
uh, some root diseases on some plants. I don't know if any of these plants will experience root disease with having air pockets around their roots, but why risk it? <laughs> Also, the first time when you water a container, the soil level is going to go down. So you're better off filling it pretty high and leaving maybe about an inch or, or maybe a little less. I mean, I kind of have like eighth of an inch in there because the soil will compact as the season progresses and then you'll end up with just a really deep lip on the container. That's going to make it a lot harder for the plants to trail and do what they're supposed to do in the container. So by having a smaller lip around the inside of the container, you're going to make it a lot easier for them to trail like this and uh, look more beautiful. And you can't see the zonal geranium right now in this pot, but it is there. It is small because I did not pot it up. I was supposed to pot it up uh, ages ago, but I didn't have the time and I also was running out of the soil because I have so many plants to pot up. So. I just uh, went the lazy route <laughs> because I'm just so busy and I don't have a lot of time on hand and I left it in the container and it's going to do okay it will grow pretty quickly especially when I give it the once a week feed that I'm going to be doing and I use organic uh, agro thrive and that has some good nutrients in it that's going to allow your annual flowers to continue to bloom throughout the season. When you have annual flowers, you want to make sure to give them plenty of food throughout the summer to ensure that they are going to continue to bloom for you because if you don't, they will not bloom, they'll stop. <laughs> also the nice things about these plants that you don't have to do any deadheading on them. With plants that you have to do deadheading on them, you have to be constantly on top of them because as soon as the plants go to seed, that's a signal to the plant that it should stop producing flowers because it has already reached its, reached its goal, which is to reproduce. Because the main goal of plants when they are putting out flowers is to make more of the, themselves, to reproduce and uh, populate <laughs> this earth. So. These new varieties that they are coming up with have sterile flowers, which means that they simply do not produce any seeds and they just kind of clean themselves off and they continue to bloom. It is really nice. The only downside is that if you want to save any seeds from these plants, you can't. So if you want to have the old fashioned varieties, you probably would want to go to the heirloom seed companies like Baker Creek, maybe Johnny Seeds, would have them. It's not an heirloom seed company, but they do have heirloom seeds in there as well. And a lot of companies online have these seeds. I also uh, purchased some seeds from, what's it called? Outside Pride. They don't necessarily have heirloom seeds either, but they have a lot of plants that grow from seed and you can propagate them from seed as well, if that's what you want to do. But there is a beauty about having plants that do not propagate from seed and that is you don't have to deadhead them and they'll just continue to bloom. So let's go ahead and plant the next container.
I think these containers look beautiful on both sides. Even though you see there's a gap right here, this is going to be filled up with the geranium and with the calabrocoa, and you're not going to see any soil anymore. And this one on this side is already full, uh, plus this bowl that <laughs> my kids were playing with. But I love the colors and I love the wispiness of the Diamond Frost Euphorbia. And I think the coral geranium in this area is going to look beautiful because this area, this deck gets shade around two o'clock or something like that. And by having something that's pastel and is not super dark, the colors are going to pop. If I picked darker colors in here, it would be more difficult to see them and they're not going to be as enjoyable. I think this combination is going to be beautiful. So let me show you the opposite side of these containers. Excuse the stairs. I do have to scrub them or power wash them. I don't know, but I do have to clean these stairs. But look at the containers. I think they look absolutely beautiful. I don't know if you guys can see the colors, but let me bring you a little closer. So this is the front of the container. I think that crack over there in the middle, it kind of gives this container character. And um, I love the patina from the moss and just the growing over the container over the years. And of course, when you put water on it, it's going to uh, be more apparent. Now these calabrocos are kind of drooping because I did get some water on them and they were also super dry uh, so everything was super dry with exception for the geranium. I'm already loving this combination. So the only thing that requires deadheading in this whole combination is the geranium. I am not sure if I already mentioned that. If I did, I'm sorry. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that this information is passed on to you. <laughs> everything else doesn't de need any deadheading. And just, uh, I will keep it on a weekly basis watering. I might have to water it every other day. So these containers are in full sun, but they do not receive the complete full sun, like 12 hours or so of sun that we get in the summer. Uh, because, like I said earlier, the sun kind of backs away from this area uh, around one or two in the afternoon. So they do receive adequate sunlight in order for the calabrocoa to perform and they also uh, I'm not, are not going to be fried in the summer so I might have to water them every other day although this container is packed full so it might be every day I may find myself hooking them onto drip we'll see if that's going to happen or not I want to eventually have all my containers on drip and all my flower beds on drip and everything on drip and on timers because I forget to water stuff and sometimes I might not be here to water it so I want things to be automated so that things don't suffer. I also wanted to give you just a quick tour of this bed over here. Just imagine that this grass over here is edged and there are no weeds in the bed. You can pretend, right? <laughs> and that this panel over here is not broken. <laughs> One day will get fixed. But um, let me take this out of here. Oh, look at these though. We have here the creeping thyme. And I've planted these several years ago, but my only beef with the creeping thyme is that it dries out in the middle. And But I mean, it's coming back over here. So I just have to kind of keep on top of it and keep pruning it. It did seed itself in the bed as well so it's going to be a good ground cover and I'm also letting these dianthus seed themselves wherever they want and uh, they're filling up this area. When I first started I just had a small swoop right here and now they're just filling up this bed and I this is what I want. I want them to be a good ground cover. I love the color of the dianthus and I think with the creeping thyme because they're both sun loving they're going to do great in here and right here again excuse the weeds I haven't gotten to this bed yet we have this uh, hardy geranium I'm not sure what the variety of this is I found it somewhere on the property and I just plopped it in here and these are the bearded iris also I don't know what variety they are 
and I transplanted them. They were in the front flower bed and they just multiplied like crazy. They love it over here. This area right here, there's actually a slab of concrete so I can't plant anything that has deep roots in here. So having these bearded irises in here and these dianthus and the creeping thyme is perfect. Also the hardy geranium seems to do pretty well in here. In the back, I have just a regular common yarrow, which I'm going to be removing out of here and planting something else. Uh, I let it go for a little bit last year because I was injured and I wasn't able to get in here and take care of this area. Uh, but I want to plant something else in here. I feel like I need some sort of a grass. I really want to get this moly grass in the back. I do have some elephant ears, purple with the purple leaves. I think that would also look pretty in here. I don't know if I have the proper depth for it though because we have again the concrete slab and also a lot of rocks in that area. And in the back there's a coral rose. I forgot its name. I lost its tag. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> and over here in the front we have some euonymus and I think this is a creeping time. Uh, a a creeping euonymus and uh, I got it it was in the back over there and it was kind of in the shade and it was growing under the deck so I pulled it out of there and I planted it in here and it, it just started growing like crazy I just have to keep in keep it in check make sure it doesn't kind of overtake uh, over the bed and also I want to make sure that it stays low so that we can still see the back of the bed Behind this mullen, which I did not plant in here, there is some Siberian iris and that blooms uh, purple, dark purple. And I was thinking I left this mullen in here because I really love the texture. I will be pulling it out because I don't want it to bloom, but I just kind of left it in there and I wanted to look at it because I was thinking... Uh, it's very similar to the texture of lamb's ear and it made me think that having some lamb's ear in this area maybe right here kind of and going in that direction is going to look very beautiful with all these textures some lamb's ear that has some bold leaves to it and on this side over here i want to come with some purple hookara i'm not sure what type uh, something that also can withstand the sun because this area is gets a lot of heat in the summer right now it's in the shade but but, but it's six o'clock so um, the afternoon shade starts to kind of come this way and it slowly uh, it covers this whole bed so but this bed is in full sun in the back climbing on the lattice over there is a honeysuckle i think it's red and i don't like red in my flower beds but i put it there because i thought it would be really cool because it will bring the hummingbirds but i also noticed the hummingbirds on the chives over here so i do want to pull it out and i want to put a nice trellis in the back and i really would like to actually cover this area with a board like a black painted black or the same color as our shutters which is kind of a charcoal black color blue color kind of and I want to have a couple clematis in here or maybe a climbing rose and a clematis I think that would look really nice together and in the back over there we have some flocks some tall flocks and those also are seeding themselves everywhere but that's okay I could just take whatever they seeded and plant it wherever they want and we have these this weeping cedar in here and it doesn't look like it's doing good at all I want to transplant it somewhere else uh, somewhere where it will have the room to grow and also I don't like the color in here because we already have a yellow in here I want to plant something else to cover up this post right here maybe a boxwood and form it into kind of a ball shape in here uh, maybe some green mountain boxwood is that what it's called i forgot its name <laughs> something of the sort in here and in the back we have a hydrangea that withstood some winter damage it has uh, 
it's not thriving at all. This is the oak leaf hydrangea. I ordered the one that has the star flower on it, which I forgot its name, but I think they sent me the Gatsby Gal, and this is supposed to be able to withstand a lot of sun, but the problem with it is that it requires a lot of water. So I really want to hook this whole bed on irrigation so that I don't have to be watering this hydrangea every day. And around it, there's also some yarrow and some irises in here. I just wanted to show you this bed because I thought it looks so pretty, even with all the weeds around it, especially this corner over here. I just love how it looks now. I wish this area was clean so that you guys can see how pretty it looks like, but um, pretty soon all these bearded irises are going to open up and we're going to have the chives in there, uh, hopefully still in bloom, and the rose hopefully is going to bloom soon, and all these colors are going to look very beautiful together. The iris, I'm hoping, the uh, not the iris, the clematis. I want to get a purple, a dark purple clematis because I feel like I need a dark purple in here because we have the coral, we have the light pink with the phlox, we have the magenta pink over here and the light bluish pink with the with the thyme over here. So I want something that blooms purple uh, because I think this bed needs it. I hope you guys found this video helpful and I hope you found it enjoyable and it brightened up your day. And if you enjoy these types of videos, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I try to publish two new videos every week and I do a lot of contents on gardening. As the season progresses, I might be doing some food preservation uh, once, the once the harvest season is here and maybe some other types of videos. But this channel is mainly focused around gardening because that is my love and my passion. I love gardening and I love to share it with others and I want to encourage everyone to grow a garden, to grow food and to grow flowers and enjoy the beauty that God has given us and be a part of making this world more beautiful and more enjoyable. I'll put a link for you right here of the video where I planted the front porch flower pots. You can go ahead and click on that and watch it while you are waiting for the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again next time.